The identities of powerful people who palled around with Jeffrey Epstein continue to be revealed. And a name we are very familiar with here on this channel now shows up as having visited the Epstein Island in 2014. His name is Reed Hoffman. You remember this guy right here. We've seen his photograph several times. And if you remember from the Trump prosecution mind map, which is available at spotlightlawyer.com slash Trump, if you want to check it out. Reed Hoffman is this person who actually was funding Roberta Kaplan and the litigation brought by E. Jean Carroll against Donald Trump. And that was a hidden funding. We didn't know the source of the funding for some time until right before trial, Miss Kaplan revealed it in a letter to Alina Abba, said, hey, we told you during a deposition that there wasn't any funder paying for this case. Turns out there was. Turns out it's Reed Hoffman, the co-founder of LinkedIn, a billionaire who does not like Donald Trump, who formed different PACs and different organizations like America Future Republic, spending 22 million bucks to stop Trump. And now we learn that he went and visited the Epstein Island. And the Wall Street Journal has some more details on that for us. They tell us that they got schedules and emails that show deeper relationships between a bunch of people. Lawrence Summers, he wanted $1 million to fund an online poetry project that his wife was developing. We know who Lawrence Summers is. He's the former treasury secretary and a one-time Harvard University president. Where did he go for that money? Epstein. He said, I need small-scale philanthropy advice. My life will be better if I raise $1 million for Lisa. Mr. Summers said in an email to Epstein in 2014, after his convictions, he referred to his wife, Elisa New, a Harvard professor, says mostly it will go to make a PBS series for teacher training. Ideas? Epstein replied that they could meet in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Summers invited him over for dinner. Wall Street Journal got a trove of new documents. Two days later, they made plans to meet at the fireplace, a cozy restaurant. In 2016, another nonprofit linked to Epstein donated 110 grand to the new nonprofit which develops video content around poetry. The journal reviewed a bunch of documents, thousands of pages of emails coming from 2013 to 2017, shows that Epstein had a lot of contact with powerful people, and he pleaded guilty to soliciting and procuring a minor in 2008. And these people were meeting after the fact. 2014 is when they got together. Miss Summers now deeply regrets being in contact with Epstein after his conviction. And regrets accepting funds from Epstein. The nonprofit later made a contribution exceeding the amount received to a group working against trafficking. But many of these people or institutions named in the, in the documents were not previously known. Some documents show that disclosures about their palling around with Epstein were incomplete. Other documents provide new details about how often and where they met. Here's another photograph. The documents don't reveal the purposes of the meetings, but there were new details including this person here, the funder of anti-Trump litigation and anti-Trump efforts, Reed Hoffman, a billionaire venture capitalist and LinkedIn co-founder, visited Epstein's private island in the Caribbean and was scheduled to stay over in his Manhattan house in 2014. And you remember the photographs inside that Manhattan house from the Glenn Maxwell trial that we covered at length here. Many of those exhibits were so problematic for the jurors that they were redacted. We couldn't even see him. So Reed Hoffman is going to go hang out with him. Hmm, already did at the private island, according to documents, and was going to go schedule a sleep overnight in Manhattan. Curious. Woody Allen, also involved in this, attended dozens of dinners with his wife at Epstein's mansions. Ehud Barak, a former Israeli prime minister, visited Epstein's dozens of times, accepted flights on his private jet, visited his mansions in Florida and New York. Billionaire co-founder of Apollo Global Management Group called Leon Black scheduled more than 100 meetings with Epstein over four years. MIT and Hoffman, Reed Hoffman, said he met with Epstein to raise funds for MIT and that he regrets interacting with Epstein after his conviction. Mr. Allen's spokesman, Woody, said that filmmaker went with his wife to social groups. Mr. Black declined to, com declined to comment. He stepped down after an Apollo investigation found he paid Epstein for tax planning and estate advice. Mr. Barack said he often visited Epstein when he traveled to New York. He said he met interesting people at Epstein's townhouse. 
they would discuss politics and other topics. Yeah, in retrospect, seems like a terrible version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He seemed to be an intelligent person, socially well-connected, wide area of interest, science and geopolitics. He said that he never participated in any parties or any activities with girls or women. Here's a picture of a villa, part of his island. The documents show that the disgraced financier kept a busy schedule, filling his days with politicians, executives, celebrities. Prosecutors say he had abused girls in 2019, died that year, allegedly waiting in jail. Now, Barnaby Marsh is another executive, met with Epstein two dozen times. So many billionaires knew him. Nobody ever said, watch out for him. He said Epstein convened people, including Bill Gates, to try to solve problems facing rich donors. Epstein told Mr. Marsh that Epstein was managing money for Gates. I had high hopes that he would followed the paths of others, but in the end, he disappointed me. Bill has said many times, it was a mistake to have ever met with him, and he deeply regrets it. Investors are also buying the island, and I'm curious what they're going to find on there. Two Caribbean islands, once owned by Jeffrey, are going to be going for 60 million bucks. Many of the crimes are alleged to have taken place there. A U.S. investor has bought two islands who were once owned by Epstein. Stephen Deckoff with SD Investments bought Great St. James and Little St. James for 60 million bucks and plans to build an exclusive resort on the island. Total sale of 110 million. The investment firm said in a statement that a significant portion of the sale proceeds will go towards the government. 25 room resort island were originally on sale for 55 million each. Locals had named it Pedophile Island. Three beaches, a helipad, gas stations, and more than 70 acres of land. They say Epstein died by suicide. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he did in a jail. So the story continues and a lot of very powerful names on here who just continue to roam free. 2009, when Epstein was charged with trafficking, the Dubins were horrified. Everybody was horrified. Everybody regrets it. But they continued to run free. Epstein donated millions of dollars to Harvard during Summers' tenure there, because Harvard is gross. Summers didn't solicit donations for Harvard, but Epstein just gave them anyways. Mr. Marsh at Epstein asked him multiple times if the foundation could donate to the project, but they didn't. Nobody wants to comment on it. Epstein arranged for Allen to join dozens of dinners at his house. Look at that, Woody Allen and Jeffrey Epstein hanging out. Woody and his wife lived in the same neighborhood. They frequently hung out. Guest list ex included all sorts of other people. Wow. So it's basically just a big giant intelligence operation where he just went around and gathered everybody up. Here's more on Reed. Mr. Hoffman, the LinkedIn co-founder, has apologized for his interactions with Epstein, including inviting him in 2015 to a dinner in Palo Alto with Silicon Valley leaders. After Epstein was arrested, Hoffman said he had met with him to help raise funds. The documents reveal that Epstein had plans for Hoffman and another to visit his private island in March and November 2014. On the second date, Epstein planned to travel with both men from Palm Beach to the island for a weekend and then fly together to Boston. Here's a photograph. Billionaire Reed Hoffman on the left, Lawrence Summers, Mrs. Summers on the right. When the venture capitalist had a flight scheduled to land late at night, Epstein arranged for Mr. Hoffman to stay overnight in his townhouse. The following morning, Mr. Hoffman was scheduled to attend, quote, a breakfast party with Epstein, Mr. Gates, and others, according to the documents. Hoffman told the journal he only once visited the island for an MIT fundraising trip. He said he regrets ever meeting with Epstein. His last interaction was in 2015. He says it gnaws at me that by lending my association, I helped his reputation and thus delayed justice for his survivors. He said in an email. He said he met with Epstein to discuss science projects. Mm -hmm. While I relied on MIT's endorsement, ultimately I made the mistake, and I'm sorry for my personal judgment. Mr. Ito said, Reed attended a few fundraising events at my request, including one trip to Little St. James after I confirmed to Reed that Mr. Epstein had been an approved donor for MIT in accordance with rules and regulations. After the arrest, MIT apologized for accepting the money. They said it was a mistake. They donated later 850000 to survivors of abuse. So the circle of friends that Epstein hung with continues to expand. And it's just interesting how the same people keep popping up in the same circles. Epstein and now Reed Hoffman, the funder of the E. Jean Carroll lawsuit against Donald Trump. Curious associations. Wonder what they were up to.